I'm Brian Banks and I teach uh, the Project Lead the Way class called Robotics and Design. It is in place of a music or art elective that the kids, um, we found some kids don't fit into that, so this gives them another option to choose from. The robotics portion is where the kids, they learn a program for programming. They learn sensors, they learn mechanisms, they put it all together and they create things such like a windmill. They'll create a dragster and race them and program it to say race five seconds. In the design and modeling portion of the class, they are starting out with some basic sketching and basic uh, design problem solving and then they progress to using Autodesk Inventor, which is a 3D modeling software. And they create uh, a lot of different models and then at some point we'll turn some of those models into uh, three-dimensional three objects with our 3D printer. What we're doing is there's a bunch of different parts saved into this USB file and we're going to find this car, it's called Car Show, and it'll load it up. Then it'll ask me to apply glue so the plastic will stick to the plate. You say, tell basically the computer that the glue's set down, and then it'll start heating up the plastic, which is in this spool right here. And you can kind of see all the leftover plastic in the back in that little box. And then this is what the part should look like once it's done and all sanded. It's just really cool to see how technology has come from like the early, like when we were first able to record like sound and how TVs were made and printing something out of raw material that can turn into this from a flat surface. These kids are so naturally interested in it. I think they're literally, they're, they're born wanting to know how gears work. It, you know, take any little kids with a Tonka toys and if they can see the inside gear mechanisms working, they're excited. So the earlier you start them saying that this is a real life thing, it's not just cool for little kids, little tykes. So start them in sixth grade, get them to know the gear system, how everything's going to work together, have them learn the programming. Um, and by the time they get to high school, they're going to have a really good basis of understanding how it all works. I think sixth grade is a good choice because from here, um, Mentor is building their PLTW SEM classes. So this gives them a foot in the door. It's challenging, it's hard, but it's so fun. Um, it sets them up to sort of see what it's like to be an engineer, what it's like to uh, do problem solving on a daily basis, what it's like to go through the design process. I think it sets them up for um, further study throughout the high school and in the technical areas that they may or may not be interested in. Kids don't really know what engineers do. They don't know that there are jobs that are problem solving jobs. So often the kids are told to be a teacher or a lawyer. Um, and I think this expands their horizons and lets them know that there's more out there. Programming is so huge now that every kid that is in school needs to know how to do some kind of basic program, whether it's like a click and play programming or actually writing out script, which is what they do. They use Robot C for the programming section. In the design and modeling classes, they use that inventor program, which is a real life program that they use. So when you look up on YouTube how to make something in inventor, it's for businesses. So that is a real life application. We're trying to be on the cutting edge of, of, a, of a STEM curriculum, and that's, that's really what we're, we're trying to promote, is that we're trying to integrate science, technology, engineering, and math, especially at a young age, and trying to uh, get the kids exposed to uh, engineering concepts, design, design process, and problem solving as early as possible. So this stuff we used for building robots. Um, we learned that the how much it weighs really affects. So right here, there is this plate. These go a little slower because these are a little heavier. But since these, we made our own, and it went much faster because they were lighter. Start off with a base plate, and you have the cortex here, which is basically the brain of the car, and everything's connected to it. The motors right here that move the wheels and the gears, and this is a limit switch. This will limit your motion 
to go when to turn on the motors and to go forward or backwards. Um, and these are part of the axle. They help hold the wheels in place and um, help stop the wheels from sliding around. Uh, well, we're building a car right now, but we're building it so that it'll go fast. That's why we have a big to small gear. And we have a big gear in the back and a small gear in the front, front because it'll make the air flow goes a lot smoother in the front. Last year we had six wheels on it, but then it was too difficult because we had six gears on it. But this, this year we're making it simpler and we're just putting it together tighter so it'll go quicker. They come in with very little knowledge of robotics and design. So the growth that we see from beginning to end is, is tenfold. They really come in not knowing how to build the gears, what are gears, to having a functioning car robot that is programmable. And then they go into not knowing what a CAD program is to being able to manipulate it and, and work on it. The sixth graders currently, I have three classes that are working on gear trades. From that, that class will then create um, a mechanism such as a windmill or a pull toy. After that's done, then they will learn how to program sensors, and then they'll put the mechanisms and sensors together to create a car or a working windmill that goes on when it's dark out or off when it's light. The kids, when they hear robots, think that they're going to build, you know, the battle bots that they see on TV or, or, or big, you know, robots. But really, um, they like the cars. We end up building the cars for speed. Probably for the design and modeling part of the class, the favorite project is uh, their jungle gym design. They will be given a problem where they'll need to design a uh, jungle gym that will fit at an elementary level playground. Um, and it'll have to have 10 parts to it. They'll use the Autodesk Inventor program to create each one of the parts and then assemble those parts together into their own creation, into their own design. All right, and this is the CAD program that we use to help program the cars. And so here you can program what the motors moving, moving forward, backwards, and the speed. You can also program like there's waiting where you can wait a few seconds or as long as you want to and to program the bump switch, limit switch, and all those different things. It's such an awesome opportunity for the kids. It really is. The kids that miss this, like that are in eighth grade, they're mad that they didn't get a chance to do this. So this is cool stuff and it's not just cool, it's, it's difficult. So if it's not that easy class and the kids know that coming in, but they're still ready for the challenge, they're going to be doing a lot of different things in here that really require problem solving skills and I think that's what a lot of kids are lacking nowadays. They are often, I don't know how to do that, how do you do that? In, in here they don't get that opportunity, they have to figure it out themselves. For so long they, the, the kids are coming to us to say I have a problem, can you help me solve it? And, and we teach them to do that and then this, this class really takes all of that away and they have to rely back on themselves. There is no wrong answer here. It either works or it doesn't, and if it doesn't, they know to go back into the process and fix what didn't work. The most fun part would have to be the, like how creative we could be with building it, and the most difficult part would be having to program it. Like You would have to keep going back to it and trying and going back to it. It was such a relief to be able to understand all of it. At first, it was it's like a bunch of numbers and symbols, and now I completely understand it. I think they like the hands-on aspect of it the most. Um, it starts out a little bit slow, but through three quarters of the year, uh, we're active every day, uh, either building things or uh, creating things either uh, in the 3D environment or with the actual robotic kits. Um, I have students in the very beginning of the day, say first period, before the bell rings, if um, they're in the classroom, say 10, 15 minutes early, they're, they just say, can we get in? And we're like, okay. So they'll hop into the kits, they'll open them up, and they're working before I even say go or take attendance. So they naturally really want to do this. It's fun. Probably the biggest part is just to see the kids' uh, engagement, enthusiasm with, with the curriculum. Um, it's, it's exciting for them. It's fun for them. Uh, a lot of times they come in during their free time to, uh, to work or to get caught up or, or just to move ahead and to gain some extra skills that, that aren't just part of the required um, skills that I ask them to obtain. 
If it's fun for the kids, it makes my job so much easier. It's really, when you get that like that moment when the kids are all working and you don't have to intervene at all and thus ask the question, that's awesome. It, it really is. That's kind of like that great teacher moment where you're like, this is pretty cool. Yeah.